Okay, so chapter seven went into the Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithms under the hood. So what's going on within the black box? Uh, so we have more of an understanding instead of just throwing our numbers at the models and taking the numbers it's fit that. So the learning objectives for this chapter were yeah, to have a conceptual understanding of how the Markov chain algorithms work, uh, explore the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, which I believe is what like the Gibbs sampler and the Hamiltonian algorithm kind of originate from, and learn how to implement this with a normal, normal model. So um, our goal is to approximate the posterior distribution. And to do this, we want our Markov chain to spend more time around the mean value, which are always um, with each new value being dependent on the previous value. So to do this, uh, we start at, we start the chain at one location, and then we propose a new random location, new prime, or a new proposal for the next stop. And in the chapter, they describe this as sort of being the tour guide for the chain. Yeah. Uh, so once you propose this new location. You need to decide whether you want to go to the new proposed location or if you want to stay at the current location. And with the Monte Carlo algorithm, you propose the location by drawing from a posterior model and then you go there. But sometimes we don't know what that posterior model is which is where the, I already forgot the name, <laughs> which is where the Metropolis Hastings chain comes in. And additionally, you want to use this um, instead of the Monte Carlo because these posteriors tend to be more complicated and so that makes it harder to calculate the posterior. <laughs> Oops, notes. Need to supplement it with the actual chapter. Okay, so um, to propose a new, a next step in these models, you can sample from a different model. And the example they used uh, was a uniform proposal model with a half width of W. So basically, it proposes. Uh, new locations within an equal range. So that's exemplified here by the picture where we're currently at three and your values are limited to a minimum of two or a maximum of four. So in this case, the half width or W is one, I believe. Yes. And this basically works because we know that our posterior is going to be proportional to the prior that we gave it and the likelihood that we gave it. Tried my best to understand this stuff, but it is still kind of vague. <laughs> 
Okay, so for step one, we're using this uniform distribution to draw our proposal steps from. And once we have one proposal, then we are going to calculate an acceptance probability to decide whether we want the chain to move to that location or not. So if the proposal value is greater than or equal to uh, the previous bin, I think that's the likelihood, right? Um, so if the proposal or grade is greater than or equal to the likelihood, then the acceptance probability is one. So we move. And if not, then we don't move. And they gave us this code to uh, see how that works. So we run this function and we gave it a half width of one with the current location being three. And so our proposal is 2.9 and our acceptance probability was 82. So because of that, we accept this proposal and that makes our next stop 2.93. And then we'll repeat that multiple times and that'll get the chain going to approximate the mean. So this first code here just did one iteration, but then they built a more complicated I mean, not complicated, but more refined one that will pull multiple iterations. And this basically shows us how a Markov chain is run. So based on how we evaluated our Markov chains in the last chapter, this is, this looks like a pretty good, uh, specification here. But the caterpillar, no specific trends, looks good. And then when we uh, pull draws from this um, calculated posterior, it looks pretty good. Yeah. And to, uh, and they mentioned that getting the half width right is sort of like a Goldilocks situation where it can't be too small, and it can't be too big, it has to be just right. And they gave us, they offered us these different half widths so we could think about what sorts of uh, Markov chains these would produce. Do you get a chance to do those? Yeah. So it was kind of obvious that the W equals one was to our number three, because we just did that one. <laughs> and the W, and I kind of had to think a bit for both of these, but the W equals 0 0.01 um, was to our two, because you can see that the uh, chain is kind of not exploring the sample space very much. So that goes in line with 
uh, the half width being 0 0.01 because it can't move much. And as you can see, the samples do not approximate the posterior very well. And for W equals 100, so half width of 100, that makes it really difficult to accept any of the proposed points. So you can see that the chain gets stuck in one spot for long periods of time, like this one almost stayed in the same spot for like a thousand iterations. And unsurprisingly, this does not give you samples that approximate the posterior. So then they showed us how to utilize this to with a beta binomial example. So in this case, our response variable is uh, binomially distributed and our prior is from the beta distribution. And this is because we want our prior to be between zero and one. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about that one. Um, it helps to run the code. Yeah, so basically the whole overarching idea of these uh, MCMC samplers is that they propose a new chain location by drawing from a proposal posterior. And then you determine whether uh, that has a sufficient acceptance probability so that you move on to that new location. That took me like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think there's <clears throat> there's a lot to discuss here about um about the MCMC and how we are actually estimating our posterior, right? So um yeah. so it's so there are several MCMC algorithms, right? The one that they are explaining here is the Metropolis Hastings one. Yes. And I think that what, um, obviously we're not statisticians. I mean, we're ecologists. I think you're an ecologist too, right? Like me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, or whatever profession anyone is, right? So mm -hmm. unless you're a statistician, I think clearly understanding how the algorithm works helps. But I find that, for me, at least, I, I just, I cannot know everything and I cannot learn everything mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, my math, <laughs> yeah, it's too much. And my math background is not that good. So I, I do what I can. So what I find useful in cases like this is, yeah, sure, try to understand how the algorithm works, but mostly is the limitations and when to use them, right? So I think that um, to estimate or to, I don't know if, to approximate the posterior, I guess that's the right word of saying it. To approximate the posterior, 
we use we can use several algorithms. One of them is the Metropolis Hastings. Another one is the Gibbs sampler. I've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. The Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, and there are others, right? People that are very very smart mathematicians. <laughs> they are the ones developing that. So yeah. I guess what what we should talk more about is when to use each one. I think the Metropolis Hastings is the one that is used the most. Um, and that's the algorithm that Stan uses based on what I read here. I'm not mm -hmm. really sure which one is the one that Jax uses, but the thing is that they have- Jax yeah. uses, I think Jax uses the Gibbs. Mm. The Gibbs sampler, yeah, that makes, yeah. That makes sense. So I guess that Th that's that's more of like where I am what I want to know it's like so if Stan is using these Metropolis Hastings and Gibbs is using the other one how does that affect my results or when should I use one and not the other etc cetera, etc cetera. based on what they're saying here which is very little information in section 7.7 mm -hmm. so they're saying that um the Metropolis Hastings is a uh, very powerful algorithm and it's highly recommended when you're trying to simulate normal normal um, models or beta binomial posteriors that have single parameters. Uh, however, when things change, which is what happens in the models that I work with, the um, many hierarchical models, I'm not just estimating one parameter. Even if you're just doing a simple linear regression, you have two parameters there. Or if you have two covariates in that model, then you have them three, right? The intercept and for each covariate. So then when we start growing these models, that's I think when you have to tune the Metropolis Hastings algorithm and then go for others. Yeah, like the sense. Gibbs and the Hamiltonian Monte Carlo. But that's what I wish I could, I wish they would have like sort of um, explained a little bit more instead of, of the rest, right? That it's just going through um, how the algorithm works. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it would have been good to know when, like a bit more comparison between the different uh, MC and C samplers. Um, but I do feel like this chapter kind of explained a bit more what these algorithms are doing. So I feel like I could visualize it pretty well, but. Yeah, and I wish there was like a like a maybe um I'm sure someone has already written me something about this. And I, I didn't have time, but I kind of wanted to look for a blog post or something where they explain the differences between the algorithms between Jackson Stan and all of them. And sort of mm -hmm. like what are the limitations when to go for one or the other. Because the only thing that I know is that if I'm working with occupancy models, like with zeros and ones, use JAGS, don't use STAN. That's, that's, but nobody has, I mean, I haven't really dove deep into why, right? But people just have just said that to me. Working mm -hmm. with occupancy, go with JAGS. If you're working with a regular GLM or a, or a linear model or whatever, go with STAN, that's okay. Or JAGS, either one is good. I don't know if, if you've had similar advice or if someone has told you like, why go with Jags instead of Stan or something like that? Yeah, we mainly use Jags for everything, um, but I think the Richard McElrath uh, statistical rethinking book mentions mm -hmm. that the Hamiltonian is good to use when your Jags model gets stuck. There's like there's like a specific thing that happens, like has something to do with like a U-turn or something. Like if your JAG sampler samples back 
words or something, then it's prone to getting stuck. Whereas with the Hamiltonian, it doesn't have that problem. Uh, so something like that, but I don't remember the specifics. Oh, so he like, explains it a little bit. Okay. I have yeah. to, I, I'm reading his book, but going very, very slowly because I'm in a different, um, I'm in another um, book club with other people. It's in Spanish and we're reading that book, wow. the um, the Richard McElroy's yes. book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. And he also has videos, right? Is, is it that mm -hmm. one, lecture 12, that they discuss that, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I watched this a long time ago. I'm going to mute the ad. I don't want to hear ads. Yeah, I guess I don't remember when she mentions it. Okay. Ah, look, I'm gonna send you a link via the um the chat here. So it's explaining, of course, it's on Stack Exchange because that's like at this point. The only way to find <laughs> help with these things, Stack Exchange. So anyway, one of the answers is saying that um, stand difference from Jags and bugs in that um, the programming language is more flexible. That's what they say, but I find it <laughs> much better to use Jags. And yeah. second, Stan's Markov chain Monte Carlo techniques are based on Hamiltonian Monte Carlo uh sampler and jags is based on gibbs or metropolis hastings and then they they give other um references to work to find more information mm -hmm. um. Yeah, I have to look at you some more. I think that helps me more than knowing how the thing works, which is good. <laughs> but I want to know more wow. about this. Like more when you would use the different tools rather than yes because if i have gritty. <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's useful i'm not saying it's not i just wish that section 7.7 .7 would have had mm -hmm. like a maybe a table i'm not saying mm -hmm. explain everything to me right but yeah <laughs> just have a table when you're saying okay so these are we're working in r whatever's happening on python whatever's happening in other languages we don't care right now this is based on r so what is what the the pro the software the packages that are outside or that are out there for you to do Bayesian models? These are the ones, and the way they differ in the the way they estimate the or the way they compute the MCMC are like this. These are the samplers that each one use. These are when each one is recommended and the limitations of each one. Say, for example, um. Uh, Stan is best to use on for these models, but if you're gonna use these other ones, then better go to Jags or something, right? I think <laughs> that would have been very useful to me as a user. 
that is not yeah. a tradition, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You kind of have to like read a million books to find the one yes. author that mentions it. <laughs> but if that, yeah, because I feel like they they miss the authors missed that opportunity there. I'm gonna see if I can find something on Twitter. And then if I do, I'm going to put the, the question there because I, I a lot of my friends are Bayesian statisticians and they know a lot about that. And if not, then uh, I'll put it on Mastodon too because I'm on Mastodon. And there are a lot of people there that are very happy to explain these kinds of things. So I'm going to put that question there. And then whatever they say, I will put it in the Slack. Um, in the Slack, yeah, just that chat box I was going to say but no in the slack so that um so we can understand a little bit more about that because I think that that's what I want to know like how like help me make a decision right yeah okay and then the book was talking about um yeah because they are focused on standards great then um Uh, 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 uh. Let me see the last part. Huh? Some percentage indication. Yeah, so it jumps up and down. We saw that. Now the exercises. I don't remember seeing anyone that was like. You know, let's discuss this part. Let me see if I can find one now. What state are you in? Uh, I'm living in Kansas right now, but oh. next year I'm gonna move because I'm starting a new postdoc. Oh, I haven't okay. signed the contract, but we are going through the paperwork. So I hope they don't back down or back <laughs> back out or back whatever. Uh, <laughs> so I would be moving to another state, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's cold. <laughs> Kansas, um, well, it's colder than California for sure, but it's mm -hmm. not um, Nebraska. I was living in Nebraska before because that's where I got my PhD. And yeah, Nebraska was much colder than Kansas. Here we are like, what's the weather right now? I feel like it's maybe, um, I want to say 32. Oh no, it's probably like 36 right now. Let me see. It's 30, 36 exactly. Yeah, 36 wow. degrees. So yeah, I think it will probably go down maybe low 20s. I don't expect it to be any lower than that um, this winter. And it's not super snowy. It's rainy. Yeah, it's a little rainy, very humid, but it's not particularly snowy, like, you know, 20 inches of snow or something like that. No, never. No. Yeah, 56 over here and I'm cold. <laughs> Is what what's the weather? Fifty six. Fifty six. That's <laughs> summer. <laughs> oh my God! No, girl, you are in paradise over there. Mm. I heard that UC signed um, signed a contract with the uh, with the union saying that uh, they reached an agreement. Is that right? Or are they still on strike? Um, I think they reached an agreement with like postdocs, but they haven't reached one yet with TAs and GSRs. Ah, so postdocs and right. faculty. That's right. That's okay. what I read. Yeah. Postdocs and faculty, but students, grad students, not on TAs. Well, TAs, grad students, right? Not with yeah. them. Oh, okay. Well, maybe that's next. Yeah. I hope there's good news for you soon. Yeah.
Yeah. Were there any exercises you thought would be Yeah, nice? going through that. I don't think so. They were all like trying to understand. Yeah. The 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 algorithm. Ah, maybe the final ones, but they are a little complicated. Okay, let's see. The 7.9.3 section. Ah, I like those types of exercises. Yeah, so one is uh, exploring the best binomial distribution and the other one is with normal normal. Mm -hmm. So I like those. I wish, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, so how would you do the model here? So if it's the first one, proportion of emails that you can reply, maybe not even reply, but the proportion of emails that you get a day, oh my God, when I'm teaching, it's like a hundred. And I'm not teaching is maybe less five. Um, so then the yeah, the proportion. So that would be my prior non-teaching days would be five, but the proportion, yeah, it's just that it's a number five. Right, that would be that would be five. What am I looking at here? No, because that proportion goes from zero to one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so it would be. Oh. Okay, not, yeah, hmm. not as straightforward as I thought it would be. I would have to do it so that we don't do it right now. Like, but I like those exercises because yeah, then we need to like sort of start from zero. Huh. Okay, I'll see if I can work on that and maybe upload it to Slack. Because I, I like, I mean, maybe not the, um, not focused on the Metropolis Hastings algorithm, but just doing that model. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, I'll try to see if I can work on something and then put it in the Slack. <laughs> okay, then if we, yeah, that was the that was the chapter. Okay, so that was easy. Next week, then we have we dive into. Well, I guess the last part of the second um, part of the book, which is focused on the posterior, we go deep into posterior inference and prediction. I think that's when this, the, the, um, that's like when we're starting to get into very important parts of the book, I guess, or the very useful parts of the book. And then the third part is gonna be, specific examples of specific models, I suppose. But I guess, mm -hmm. yeah, so next week it's gonna be presented by Olova Femi, I think, if I remember correctly. I'm doing that one too. Or did you sign up? Oh, you signed up for that yeah. one. Okay, okay, then Diana. La next week is gonna be um, very important. I kind of like that section. So we will reconvene next week. And um, and yeah, that sounds good. All right, have a lovely week. Thanks, you too. Bye.